millions of people with heart disease owe their lives to Dr. Wilfred Gordon Bill Bigelow. Born in 1913 in Brandon, Manitoba, Bill went on to earn his M.D. from the University of Toronto in 1938, followed by a surgical residency at Toronto General Hospital. During World War II, while serving as a surgeon in casualty clearing stations, he grew interested in hypothermia, or total body cooling. I became interested in the, in the vascular system. It distressed me to see a, a limb amputated because the arteries had been shot away and the bones and everything were still there. And that led me to think about hypothermia, to preserve that limb until it could be fixed. He continued his investigation after the war at Johns Hopkins, U of T, and Toronto General. Really our major, our major discovery was we found out how to cool an animal in such a way that his body temperature and his oxygen fell parallel. So we thought if we could cool it down so that it's requiring a half or a quarter or a fifth of its oxygen, we could stop the circulation long enough to open the heart and uh, do something inside, and that's actually what happened. Dr. Bigelow's key discovery in 1950 was how to lower the body's oxygen requirements while lowering the body's core temperature to a point at which safe open-heart surgery was possible. This was first done successfully in 1952. The first open-heart operation using the heart-lung pump was a year later. The two techniques were later combined. Meanwhile, he had pioneered another major advance in the management of heart disease, the pacemaker in 1951. Well, the pacemaker, if I may theorize a little bit, is an example of doing basic research, uh, which, you know where it's going, and there's a spin-off. Somewhere along the line, you find something quite unrelated to your eventual goal. And we found that the pacemaker could not only start a stop turn, but a properly made pacemaker could slow the heart or increase its rate. There's a tremendous um, bit of good fortune, really, when we were just looking for something to start a stopped heart. And we find it can control its rhythm. Dr. Bigelow's contributions have also included establishing the first division of cardiovascular surgery in Toronto in 1953. He has also been responsible for the training of 40 cardiac surgeons. There is no question that Dr. Bigelow is the most famous and most distinguished surgeon in Canada today. And he is certainly the father of cardiovascular surgery in this country and one of the most renowned cardiovascular surgeons in the entire world. I always thought that the patients never got enough credit for courage. They were exposing themselves to heart surgery <clears throat> at a time when we couldn't tell them what the risk was.